What's up everybody, it's Bill from High Volume Games, and welcome to the first episode of the High Volume Games pod here on the High Volume Games channel. <laughs> um, this is going to be a new series, uh, series number 750,000, uh, as you know my mind tends to wander to different things, and so this is my newest adventure. Um, as you can see, I upgraded my... Uh, lovely uh microphone so we're sounding so much better and i decided i wanted to do this uh so if you haven't if you're new to the channel um i love game as it says on the page there games uh running travel and more and we're going to talk about all of those on this pod um if you notice, I have a game going on, because um, I didn't want to just show my face. You know, my beautiful face does not need to be way on, big on that screen. So I put up a game. I uh, have it running. Um, I went on for a while. Um, it will loop if it needs to be. Um, but this is the game called Only Up. Um, it's on PC. Um, it is $7.99 uh, on Steam. Um, very good game. Um, it drives me, my blood pressure and anxiety up because the, you know, your sole purpose is to go from the ground to space. <laughs> and as someone with a legitimate fear of heights, this game starts to get, um, you know, get, gets intimidating after a while. <laughs> okay. So in episode one, we're going to talk about a little trip I went on, um, this trip uh, was a birthday present, um, which my birthday was just la just this month, um, and uh, my mom had uh, asked me, did I want to go to the Red Sox game? The Red Sox were playing the Marlins. Now, if you know me, I am the biggest Marlins fan, or one of them. There's probably a few more, but, you know. <laughs> um, I'm definitely... In this area, one of the bigger ones. And uh, so I loved the idea of, one, going to a baseball game with my mom. And two, going to be able to see the Red Sox and the Marlins play at Fenway Park. Uh, I had seen the Marlins play three times in recent memory at the Lone Depot Park. Or two times at Lone Depot Park and one time in... Coors Field in Denver, Colorado, which we'll probably talk about the Denver trip uh, in a future pod. Um, so I like I love the idea of going on this. I was a little nervous. So for um, context, um, I get sick. Um, what ends up happening is I get anxiety, and the anxiety ends up getting my making me have a nervous stomach, and it generally hits me pre something, so pre race, pre flight, pre work. Sometimes, um, if I especially if I know that it's going to be a crazy day, and a lot of the times, you know, it's anticipation. So a car ride really, you know, sets my stomach crazy. Um, so I was a little nervous because we're probably about an hour from Fenway Park, but uh, then you take the you take the uh, T and add that in there, and you're probably looking at almost two hours to get there. Um, I think that was right. We I think we left around three, and we got to the ballpark around five. So I was pretty nervous that my stomach was not going to be able to hold itself or stay sedentled for the uh, journey. So, but I knew I wanted to go and I wanted to have fun. So. We went and uh, we took off and we started driving to the T station. And yeah, my stomach's doing its normal thing. It's just, you know, I ended up bringing like ginger ale, brought us uh, a bottle of like noon, um, and just trying to settle the stomach. Um, and we got to the T station, which that was good because honestly, I believed right off the bat that I was going to have to like find, you know, go. Uh, there's like a rest area with a Burger King and a mobile and all that. I figured we had to stop there or stop at a, like the Outback or something like that on 
you know, the movie theater on, you know, one of the exits. Some some weird thing. I, I just kept thinking this because, again, once my head gets into it, uh, it's, yeah, I, I start getting more nervous and stuff, even though, again, it's just a ride up to Boston. Uh, so we got on, we got to the T and, you know, I started to feel better. I think again, the, once the car rides over, you know, I start to feel a little better. Um, and then, so we decide to get on the T and this, this is where this journey starts to, this one, the, the ride up isn't as bad. We're going to talk more about this, the ride with the T, but we ended up uh, getting on and not many people on it at first couple, a couple of, you know, people also going to the game um and then so what ends up happening is uh okay i moved my seat because i was sitting next to the door and you know i think it's always respectful to generally leave that space for someone who's older or a woman or someone someone who should you know have that seat so i moved to the other side of my mom and what ends up happening is about once we get to like jfk umass um a couple of uh, ladies come in and one sits down next to my mom one sits down on the other side like the other side of the the train from me uh and the lady that sits down next to my mom just kind of started doing this and, and she started falling asleep uh she'd wake herself up and then she'd fall asleep again and her head would go closer to my mom's lap so basically by the time we got to park street this lady's like head was almost in my mom's lap like legitimately right on her lap and it's funny because if i had you know if i hadn't switched my seats it probably wouldn't have been yeah she would have either been the other way or something like that but yeah because i moved my seat yeah it got awkward for especially for my mom <laughs> um so we switched from, we got to Park Street, and that's where you have to switch to the Green Line for Kenmore. And for someone like me who does not like to be, you're going to find out quickly in this podcast that I do not like a lot of things. And one of those things is being in a crowd of people. Um, and you would think it's very weird because someone, you know, who likes to go to Disney races with 25,000 people or... You know, even the Boulder Boulder with 35,000 uh, should be okay with that. But yeah, not really. Um, <laughs> and so, and this was a, this was my issue with being, you know, squished uh, with people was a big thing in this, this night. Um, so we get on the screen line train and now everybody who's going to the Red Sox game is getting on these little trains, you know, and, uh, <laughs> And everybody shoving, you know, in and, you know, even every stop we'd get, some more people would try to shove in. And it was getting very crap. It's hot as balls because every single, you know, person is squished up against each other. Um, but we managed to get to Kenmore um, and then get out and breathe. And... <laughs> Once you get to Kenmore, everything, once we got to Kenmore Station and we started going up, everything, like that whole anxiety of getting to the game and all that, went away. Um, you get out of Kenmore um, and you see the Sitgo sign and everybody's walking up and it's just this, like, wonderful feeling that you get, you know, going to the, like, I don't know how to describe it as much as, like, you know, it makes you feel like a kid again that you're going to the ballpark. And this isn't even the way we used to go to the ballpark because we used to park at, like, the Sears uh, building. And so when we got to Kenmore and we started walking and we you could see the ballpark, you could start to hear the music. Uh, there's a lot of people, but it's not bad. Um, so we ended up getting to where we had to go, got our tickets, um, and went... I went in, found where our seats were going to be. They were just off, um, basically between home plate and the dugout on the third base side. Beautiful seats, uh, about halfway up. Um, really nice looking seats. Um, and then we decided, you know, it was still a little early, so we figured let's go get the hot dogs early. Um, you know, so my mom and I both got a couple of hot dogs, a couple, a bottle of water. Then went back to our seat and sat down, and then we started 
you know, waited till the game start. Now, it was a packed crowd for this game. You would not think that the Marlins, they don't have, they have a decent little, you know, history with the Red Sox. It's not the biggest um, because they're ALNL, uh, but they are from each both from the East, so they had seen each other a bunch of times. Uh, but you would not think that this game would be almost sold out. Um, and that they, this is where it started to a little, as far as a little uncomfortable for me went was that, and that like Fenway had changed a bit over the years, and instead of having the long rows, they decided to cut each row and like make it four seats, and then have a stairwell and four seats, and then you know do it again. And Fenway seats aren't the most aren't the biggest size, so they were already, you know, cramped. Like, I have my chair here, and it was much, you know, more sucked in. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it was good when it was my mom and I, and we were fine. Um, we ended up, uh, people who were, were not supposed to be sitting in our row, um, I know that because I'm listening to people, you know, <laughs> And originally, this family was going to sit all in one row, and then they decided, oh, when the real people came and sat in their seats, uh, they decided they were going to do two and two. And so this, you know, I ended up, that, at this point, having people on both sides of me. Um, and mom's side, actually, was not even a problem. Uh, uh, but I think she was probably more, because she had me, and then she was on the rail. Um, but it ended up this, you know, this the couple that was next to me they were more they were more into themselves than they were they into their date than they were the actual game so it ended up uh like she kept like elbowing me, you know and it was just it was weird cuz i was the problem was it's like i was really there for the game like i was there to enjoy this and i just kept getting this person like right in my bubble <laughs> but once we got to the game, once the game started, it was great. First of all, I have been to three games recently in the past three years, and I've seen a bullpen game where the where the bullpen is basically pitching, like everybody's pitching an inning or two. Um, I saw Zach Thompson pitch, but, you know, Zach Thompson was kind of like the four starter. I, this year I saw Braxton Garrett pitch, and while Braxton is doing great, he's not one of the aces that we have. And it was like, oh, I just want to see one of these, you know, one of these pitchers that, you know, these once-in-a-lifetime pitchers. And uh, so this time I got to see Jesus Lazardo pitch. Um, and I can't remember the name of the Red Sox pitcher, but... Um, because, you know, I haven't really followed them as much, but it was just going to be this really good pitching matchup. Um, I don't think it was going to be the pitching matchup we thought it was going to be. Um, but so what ended up happening is the first inning, you know, one, two, three for the Marlins, um, and the uh, Red Sox come up. I think it was Verdugo. I'll go with that. It could be somebody else. You could quote me on that. But, uh, We'll save Verdugo, but it was one of the pitchers on the... Well, one of the batters on the Red Sox gets a hit. And then for the next six innings, nobody gets a hit. Like, this was six innings of one hit ball by the Red Sox. and Oh, no, one hit ball by the Lazardo and the Marlins, and no hit ball by the Red Sox. It was fantastic. I have not seen a pitcher's duel like that from any team. <sighs> So that was pretty awesome. I'd never seen a person go that deep with a no-hitter. Um, it ended up being that the Marlins um, ended up winning. Uh, I forget how they scored their first run. Um, but uh, the second run, they won 2-0. to zero. The second run was a home run uh, by Jazz Chisholm Jr., who had just come back from injury and then who ended up getting injured like a few days later. So it was just like, you know, it was great to see Jazz. It was even better to see Jazz hit a home run 400 feet into the center field uh, bleachers. Um, so all in all, the game was fantastic. It was fun to see. You know, it was fun to have hot dogs. It was, uh, you know, we saw Carlton Fisk sitting up in the... Uh, you know, the I'm sure the 
the like luxury boxes or something um, by the by the announcers, um, and it was just it was a really nice night so or day because it was six o'clock game ended basically by eight o'clock, so it was a really nice day, um, and we the game was over. We ended up staying, and so did everybody else. Now th- that's another thing is usually you know when you get a game. Someone, they're usually leaving trying to beat the traffic and this and that, but the game was so tight and so good, nobody left. <laughs> so we decided to, you know, once the game was over, we stayed um, in the in our seats for a while, uh, basically until pretty much everyone in our section was gone, and probably about 75%, 80% of the, um, the stadium had gone. Um, but this is when it just became a, you know, a claustrophobic person's nightmare. (laughs) But it's one of those things where, you know, the stories will last forever because, so we, like I said, it was when you go from Kenmore to Fenway, it's this nice moment, you know, like I said, you see the state goes on, you see this. When you are going from Fenway Park to Kenmore, after a game, it is insane. <laughs> there are so many people everywhere, uh, you know, and then you've got people who are walking back the other way, you know, they either came from a different exit or they're going to the bar or, the, you know, but yeah, it was a, it was a very crazy walk to, it wasn't, actually the walk wasn't awful, but it was just a lot of people. Uh, what was awful was when we got into Kenmore, because you're trying to get through, and I think yeah, no, the stairwell was after the, the ticket thing. The ticket thing, so I get, I've got my ticket ready, I'm ready to go. The uh, Mom is in front of me, and, like, she gets in, and she wipes her card and goes in. Then I guess there were people to the left of me who kept having issues with swiping their card and all this, so they went to, they cut me. And, like, all four of them were just, like, trying to swipe the card and missing, trying to swipe the card and missing. One finally did it, and then I think two people went through the thing without actually, you know, swiping their card. Um, we won't go there. <laughs> um, but then finally I got there. But I'm like, like four people behind mom now. <laughs> but we got down to the stairwell, and it was like you could not. I figured we were going to be there for an hour or so because it was so packed getting into that stairwell. And it was like, oh my goodness, you know. Uh, but it ended up not, yeah, not too bad. Um, that part was good. And then we ended up getting to. Um, we we had to get take the certain train. I forget what the train was um, that we were supposed to take. Mom knew it, and thankfully she did because it was you could either go one way or the other. And yeah. Um, and we lucked out that we were, like, the only people, or we were, like, the first people to be able to catch this train that was going, you know, that way. So we were able to get on there pretty quickly. But, you know, again, people, it's it's a herd mentality because everybody started, we got on the train, and the next thing you know, everybody behind me is now pushing me into this thing. And this lady was yelling, well, not yelling, but, like, it's kind of like, will you let me in? to the spot to this chair and i'm like i'm trying to but i'm being pushed (laughs) and i literally got pushed to the back of that train because i was like way in the back by the door there was these college kids next to me but we were like the back of the train and oh my god that train ride was slow it was there was so many people and those kids would not shut up (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry, that is awfully rude of me, but it was true. They were so loud, and they were so obnoxious, and I wanted to go home. <laughs> and that ride seems like it took forever. Um, there was probably a train or two in front of that one, and you know, but we finally got to um, Park Street. Um, and we had to get back to the red line. And this is where it just got insane. Like that first part was like, okay, this is okay. We're all right. We're going to, this, it's squishy. Uh, I'm getting pushed. They're loud. I have a headache, but we're, we're going to make it. We get to the red line and it is saying like, 
like you look on the thing and we so the red line splits it said it splits from you could either go to Braintree side or you could go to Ashmont side and there's all stops in between and we are on the Braintree side so we need to be, see that train well if you look on the sign all the signs say Ashmont I was like, oh, man, we just must have missed a Braintree train, and we must have just, you know, it's going to be a long time before the next one comes. So we're waiting, and as we're waiting, everybody who is on the the following train, and the following train starts showing up. And it is getting so squishy, and again, we were there, like, we were in this spot first, and now people are cutting in front of us, and it was... Uh, you know, it was just getting ridiculous. And so the first train comes, which is supposed to be an Ashmont train, but it has Braintree sign on it. So, okay. So we jump on. And then, I don't know, we don't know what the heck is going on, but the, the, the person over the loudspeaker is going, um, yeah, this train is going to Braintree and Ashmont. It's like, um, how does that work? Because you, there are two completely different direction lines, you know? <laughs> like, one is going south and east, and the other is going south and west. So, how can you do that? Uh, then she's like, um, you're, okay, this is, this is Braintree. If you're getting off at Ashmont, you got to get out. Uh, it's like, okay, good, we're on the right train. And then they're like, okay... If you are going to Braintree, you need to get off this train and get onto a bus, and then you'll get, you know, back online. And thankfully, at this point, I Googled, because I had no idea what was going on. And yes, we were we had to get off at JFK UMass, and we had to then get on a bus, and that would take us to the next stop, which was North Quincy, and then a few exits, that, then we'd get on a train and go the rest of the way. And okay, I've done that before. Um, it's not the greatest thing, but you know, whatever. Um, at least we kind of have an idea of what's going on now. So we get off at JFK UMass. We take the, um, we we walk through the platform down the stairs. Um, there's a couple sets of buses. Oh, we're at the next bus. We're like the first, you know, four or five people on this next bus, and then a bunch of college kids. Um, cut in front of us, cut in front of everybody, you know, and so it's like, and then they ended up being right behind us, and oh, they were annoying too, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, it might be my old age now, you know, I did, this was my birthday present, you know, 44, I'm, I'm older, I might be more annoying, annoyed by things, <laughs> but they were just like, so loud they were kicking my chair like it was you know like this is you know a, a six-year-old on an airplane <laughs> and so i was just you know i was getting frustrated and so we this ride took about 15 20 minutes um which is crazy because it takes like four minutes on that t um <laughs> but um so we got on to we got to North Quincy, which had been to a few times, um, and we get downstairs, and a train is leaving the station, but it says, like, or it's about to leave the station, and it says, like, out of service, so, okay, so all the people who had gotten there on those first two, uh, buses, because this was, like, the first, like, our train was, like, the first train to have this issue, like, they closed the... Uh, JFK, they closed the Braintree line at that spot at like 8.30 and we'd gotten there at about 8.45 so we were like the first train that made it um, or that got stopped so the people who got on those first buses were sitting there waiting when we got there, we were on the third bus and we ended up like getting a spot, you know, right in the middle um, and you know we had to wait, and as this is happening, as we're waiting and waiting and waiting, and this wait was like 15, 20 minutes, you know, more buses are appear arriving, because the southbound train is, there. that one's going running on, running on schedule, it's the northbound stuff that's going very slow, and so we ended up waiting and waiting, more people are filling up the spots and filling up where we were, and like pushing, and like, uh, you know, just cut, getting right in front of us, even though we had already been there. So, you know, 
I kind of, at this point, now if you know me, especially like walking through crowds, perfect example is uh, Dopey. I'm very timid. Um, so perfect example with Dopey is that in every time that I'm usually in a corral, people somehow get ahead of me. I think it's just because I'm just kind of following somebody. I'm never trying to get ahead and people end up, you know, kind of elbowing in front of me. And I generally, you know, end up that fine with that. And I'm usually, you know, like the last person. I was the last person in the 5K in my corral. I was, if as you've seen in the Jarox and Spoon video for the 10K, I was one of the last people to start the race. Uh, <laughs> and even, even being like five, ten seconds behind the rest of the slackers. Um, so... I'm very timid, and especially around crowds, and I generally, you know, don't, you know, even even in a group going on a bus or something, I generally will be kind of like, okay, you can go, you can go. At this point, we're over two hours into just, um, we're two hours into just getting this uh, home. I mean, the game took two hours. Now, here we are from the baseball field to North Quincy. It's been two hours. I've had it. I've had it with people pushing me. I've had it with, you know, uh, just people cutting. I, you know, I just got annoyed. And I was just like, I, this is the first time you've ever seen me just kind of make my way through. I mean, I'm, sh I'm short, but I can't, you know, I you know, I'm bigger, so I can, <laughs> I can make my way through if I need to. It's just, I usually don't have that, you know, aggressive nature, but I was like, I'm getting on this damn, uh, T and then I'm sitting down because I've been polite enough to stand on these full trains. You know, I'm sitting down at this point because I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. I have to go to the bathroom. I, <laughs> so it was just like, you know, I had been done, but thankfully the rest, once we got onto the Queen, North Quincy train, it was about four or five stops. People were getting off. We were finally able to go and get this, you know, be done, uh, with that ride. And then the ride home was just smooth. Uh, but it took three hours to get home where it took us two hours to get there two hours for the game and it took over three hours we we got home at like 11 <laughs> so i was really just wiped out you know because i gotta go to work the alarm's gonna go off at 5 30 so i just had had it um and it's sad because you know that was the game was amazing it was just people that kind of <laughs> made it made it awkward <laughs> it wasn't bad it was not bad at all believe me I had such a fun time. Again, anytime I can go places with my mom, I enjoy it. Being able to see the Red Sox and the Marlins, being at Fenway Park, getting Fenway Franks, it's all great. And it was such a good time as far as, you know, the game goes. And, you know, I love, walk, like I said, walking through Boston, seeing the, the you know, it was just the goofiest ride home <laughs> I've ever had. Only, only a little compared to the uh, Boston Marathon walk that I did last year, where I again had to get off on the bus and you know with my backpack and all this stuff and you know, uh, and I fell on somebody because I was standing on the bus and you know it was a weird thing. Uh, but it, it was a good time. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this story. I'm sorry it's long-winded. Uh, as you see, I can talk. <laughs> um, there's going to be more of this. There's going to be more. We're going to talk about games. Like I said, just like like that picture says, we're going to talk about games. Uh, we're going to talk about running. We're going to talk about travel. We had I've had some trips this year uh, that I would like to talk about. Um, and we're going to do more. I'd love to have get the skills to you know have a guest and talk to them and be able to uh, put it together. Um, I'd love to talk to Jared and Lindsay um, about, you know, run Disney. I would love to talk to Jay Crow about, uh, you know, Boulder Boulder. I'd love to talk to Adam Jennings about promotion wars. Um, I'd love to just 
just chat with it, my cousin Eric and, you know, uh, just talk about, you know, games that we've been playing and stuff like that. Just, you know, shoot the bull. Um, and yeah, we'll see what, we, we'll see how this goes. Um, so if you actually made it to the end of this, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, this will get better as we go. Um, but till next time, I wish you the very best. Have a great weekend, and I will see you soon. Take care, everybody. Have a great night.